Today I want to give you a brief introduction to, to the book which God had me write, uh, and it's titled, O Lamb of God, Prepare Me as Your Bride. This is, uh, this is a small book, it's only 55 pages, and it's, uh, it's freely given online. You can read the entire book on our website. And it's the result of a word that he gave me more than 30 years ago. The Lord has had a very intimate conversation with me over these past three decades. And in May of 1980, he told me to make my days a path to follow and to follow the signs that are so clearly given. Well, the journey has been a long one and, uh, and filled with the heartaches and the hardships and the, and the unfortunate trials of life which we all go through. But all during that time and in the hardest times, he would have me write and journal. And the result of 12 years of journaling has produced this, this little book, O Lamb of God, Prepare Me as Your Bride. And I want to introduce you to the writing which you can read in its entirety uh, just by clicking the O Lamb of God link. When Jesus comes for his bride, will he see you as one of his wise virgins? A wise virgin is one who is preparing for his or her wedding. A wise virgin symbolizes those whose hearts and thoughts are focused on their soon coming wedding and the day when they shall be one totally intimate with their chosen one, with Jesus. Matthew 25, 1 and 2 says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. And Isaiah 62, 5 reads, For as a young man marrieth the virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. O Lamb of God is new wine for the harvest. It reveals what the Lord said about the last days and speaks of his conditions, his promises and warnings concerning his return. It gives a clear understanding of the parable of the ten virgins, the talents and the vine and the branches. These three parables illustrate the importance of the surrender of self and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It clarifies the warnings contained in the letters to the seven churches and shows how they apply to our lives today. God is calling, beloved, and the harvest is within our lifetime. The soil on which you walk and the words which you are about to hear are going to help prepare you to be his bride. God is preparing you for the wedding banquet of the Lamb. I'm going to read chapter 6. It's titled, The Wise and Foolish Virgins. While Jesus was speaking about the time of his return, he gave the parable of the ten virgins. When Jesus gave this parable, he was speaking about those who would still be alive when the trumpet sounded. He was speaking of the last days, the harvest generation, the days in which you and I are living right now. In Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, Jesus gives this parable. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in their jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was long in coming, and they all slumbered and slept. At midnight, the cry rang out, here comes the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps.
The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some from, for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is a parable of the harvest. And Jesus is speaking about believers. He compares the five wise virgins with the five foolish virgins. He's not comparing five sheep with five goats. He's not comparing five bundles of wheat with five bundles of tares or weeds. No, Jesus is comparing five virgins with five virgins. Ten forgiven, born-again believers. Jesus is speaking of those who know him. Those who know that he is the bridegroom and that he is coming again for his bride. All the virgins had lamps that were lit. They all had received Jesus as their Savior. They were all born again. Jesus is the lamp, the light of the world. In Revelation 21, 23 and 24, it reads, The Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light. At midnight, or when the world is at its moral darkness, the coming of our Lord is announced. The virgins then trim their lamps. In the original Greek, trimmed means to put in proper order. All their lamps were lit before they had either slumbered or slept, symbolizing that they all had experienced the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, who comes at new birth. Throughout the scriptures, the oil is used as the symbol for the Holy Spirit. But only the wise had oil in their jars. Only the wise had received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Only the wise ones hungered and thirsted for righteousness and were filled. We are the jars that He fills. Are you filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit? They received the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and the power to overcome the sin in their lives. The oil of the Holy Spirit makes the light in our life shine and makes our garments bright and shiny. The foolish had none of the oil that comes from the surrender of self. They did not replenish the oil of the Holy Spirit by hungering and thirsting for righteousness. They let the light of our Lord's salvation, His gift of eternal life, dwindle to a glowing ember. They took for granted their born-again experience. Are you focused on real life? This parable describes those who had knowledge of the bridegroom and an understanding of the coming rapture and the wedding feast. It describes those who were expecting to be a part of it. Jesus is talking about believers and the readiness of their lives. He is talking about you and me, the harvest generation. The church has fallen asleep, but we are now in the midst of a great awakening. Revival is upon the land. The foolish are those who rebel and reject the move of the Spirit. The foolish stop watching for him. The foolish let his awesome sacrifice, his redemptive love and death on the cross, and impending judgment fade from their daily lives. The foolish focus on the things of this world and do not seek the deeper things of the Holy Spirit. Their faith becomes cold and lifeless. 
you must awaken. You must not let the comforts and pleasures of this life deaden the real life, the spiritual life, the life you were given at spirit birth. You must not become foolish and forsake the oil for your lamp, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Are you making yourself ready, beloved? The wise virgins took oil so their lamps would shed light and show them the way. They made themselves ready. If you yearn for all that God has to offer and listen to His voice and seek to know Him more intimately, you will walk in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You will walk in the fullness of eternal life and you will know the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit accordingly as they are given. You will have the heart and faith and strength to stand firm to the end and receive all his eternal rewards. Hebrews 3 verses 12 and 14 reads this, See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. Eternal life is the gift God gives to everyone. It is free to all who will receive it. It produces a peace that passes all understanding. The gift is given to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The gift is given without merit or works. It is your gift received by faith in the reality of Jesus and the price he paid for your sins. It is a gift given as you repent of your sins. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The word believe is a very important word in these days that we are living. You know what it means to believe in Jesus? The word believe has lost its meaning in our comfortable world. It has become an intellectual bookmark for ideas embraced with feelings and emotions. It has lost its original power. You must put the words of the gospel in the context of the time in which it was written. In those days, when people were asked if they believed that Jesus was the Son of God, they were actually committing their lives to that fact. Because to admit to that meant they could actually be imprisoned or even killed just for believing in Jesus. That is the true reality of the word believe. Does this meaning describe your relationship with Jesus? Does your belief come from the core of your being? It is, is it the most important thought in your life? If not, you should go to Him in total surrender and repentance. To believe, as Jesus means it, is to accept and act upon all His words and not just those we choose. If you truly believe Jesus, believe in Jesus, you will not only love Him, but you will strive to obey Him. And how can you possibly obey Him when every part of your carnal nature struggles to defeat you? It can only be done with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The infilling of the Holy Spirit gives you the fullness of eternal life. The infilling of the Holy Spirit allows you to enter the kingdom of God and that is where true peace and true intimacy with the Father is found. God bless you beloved and I pray that you will look into O Lamb of God prepare me as your bride. As I said it is freely given on the, on the site and it is, as the Father has said, it is a path to follow. God bless you.